Miss Delphine Smithers was an 83-year-old who lived by herself, save for her cat. Her husband had passed away two years prior, and her children have since grown up and left the nest. But come Christmas time, and Miss Smithers usually gets her joy on whenever her grandchildren paid a visit. She fought about the looks on their faces whenever she served them Christmas cookies and other pleasantries. This Christmas, she made some sweet, salty bark and kept it on the kitchen table. She found herself sitting down in her favorite chair, knitting a scarf, when came a sharp knock at the door. She jumped a bit, not expecting any visitors at the moment. Can we come in? Smivers tendonly laid the scarf on the arm of the sofa and gripped the chair. Her frail bones popped and shift, but getting up from the chair, Smivers collected her walking stick and trudged rigidly towards the front door. Another sharp knocking ran out, that time with more agitated than previously. I'm coming, hold on, Smivers yelled. She grasped at the doorknob and slowly turned it counterclockwise. The door creaked open. On the other side of the door were two children, a boy and a girl. The boy appeared older, presumably around 13, and he wore a demi hoodie and gray pants. He was holding the hand of an eight-year-old girl who was wearing a blue dress with white lace. For whatever reason, the children had their heads bowed, looking at their feet. The boy, the boy repeated his question. Can we come in? Smithers scratched her head. It was 10 p.m. Why would these children be at their ho her house at that time of night? Somehow the boy must have realized what she was thinking. We need to borrow your phone. My cell phone's battery died. Smithers fought about it for the suddenness of having these unexpected guests, but they were children regardless. At the very least, she would grant them this one request. She nodded her head, gesturing the children to come on in. Smithers directed them to the living room, where her cat droned awake from the ruckus. When it sets its eyes on the chill, mysterious children, the cat arched its back and hissed. Smithers walked over to silence her cat. Lex, these are our guests. Behave yourself. The cat meowed in defeat before running out of the living room and into the kitchen. The two children sat on the sofa with their eyes still hidden. Smivers went into the kitchen and then pulled out a plate of sweets and salty bark. She returned to the living room and bent down on the children's eye levels. Care for some sweets? The boy looked up. There was a good reason as to why he was shielding his eyes. They were devoid of color or pupils. Nothing more than pitch black nothingness. Whatever he was, he assuredly was not of the earthly realm. The girl looked up as well. Her eyes matched the cold blackness of the older boy. And yet the most bizarre, Smivers smiled as well as the children, despite how hollow sockets that they call eyes. The children were speechless at first. They shared a puzzled glare. The girl waved, waved her hand right in front of the Smivers' face, but Smivers didn't follow the path of it. They leaned in closer, realizing that Smivers' eyes were glazed in over a thin sheet of blue. She was blind, and Smivers suddenly frowned. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't care for them? Ah, uh, thank you, the boy said. He took a piece of the sweet and salty bark and broke it off in his hand before passing it a girl a piece. Their heavy teeth ground down the sweets. Oddness aside, the two children couldn't help but bask the sweetness and saltiness of the snack. They indulged themselves in more sweets before getting up. They looked at the decorations with curiosity. On top of the fireplace at the stand was a small replica of the nativity scene. From her mental notes, she figured that the two children had stopped at the fireplace. Isn't this such a lovely display, she asked. Do you know the story of Christmas? We know about your Jesus, the boy responded. Our ancestors spoke a lot about him. Confused by the statement, Smivers nevertheless allowed the children to fervor marvel at the Christmas decorations. The girl rustled the Christmas tree, causing the ornaments to fall on the ground. She sees when she sensed Smivers getting upset. 
The two children played in the nut with the nutcrackers and listened to the Christmas psalms. The hours in, in aged slowly until a sun surgical surge ingenerated throughout the house. The two children looked at each other and then back at Smithers. We have to go now. Our parents are here. Bright light shone through the windows. Outside was the spherical, smooth craft half standing on three legs. A large, skinny-looking creature exited out of the craft and stood there at the door. The two children collected the plate of sweets and salty bark and exited through the front door. Then came a sound of large whistle, as if there were a thousand steam engines situated outside. Within a flash, the craft was gone. Smivers was called out by the two children, only to be met with great silence. She closed the door and then returned to her knitting, as if nothing had happened.